people. My name is Christiana. Uh, I'm a postdoc at uh, uh, postdoc researcher at uh, Ghent University, and my uh, responsibilities in the 3D Mat project uh, uh, were related with the development of a digital workflow to streamline both the design and the manufacturing of uh, 3D, printi uh, 3D printing uh, scoliosis braces. So, and today I will uh, I will show you uh, uh, what we achieved in almost three years of work. Uh, in specific for the for this case study uh, of the scoliosis braces, uh, but first I will introduce you um, to scoliosis braces. What are these devices, and what are they used for? Uh, so scoliosis braces are orthotic devices that are used for the treatment of adolescents with idiopathic scoliosis. Uh, what is this? So these are adolescent patients uh, uh, between the age of uh, 10 and 18 years old who present, as you can see here, a lateral deformation in the spine that is most visible from the frontal plane. Uh, X-ray images here, uh, they are uh, uh, taken as a means to assess and to diagnose these patients uh, and to also to assess the degree of spinal deformation shown by the patient. For mild cases of curvature, which means that uh, for, for angles of deformation of the spine visible from the frontal plane, between 25 and 50 degrees. Scoliosis braces here on the, on the right side. Scoliosis braces are used as a way to, to contain the deformation and also to, uh, to correct uh, uh, the spinal deformation at some extent to bring the, the trunk to a more balanced and comfortable uh, state to the patient. Uh, you see it here that scoliosis braces work based on a three-point pressure uh, force principle. And uh, that uh, uh, every, so, these are adolescents uh, that are still under skeletal development. And every six to 12 months uh, of treatment, uh, a follow-up X-ray image is taken uh, to the patient while wearing the brace uh, to evaluate and to assess uh, the treatment. Uh, the treatment. Um, some more uh, uh, curiosity facts about this condition is that, uh, so, uh, Typically, most of the patients, uh, adolescents that uh, uh, undergo a scoliosis brace treatment, they have to wear these devices for almost 24 hours a day. Imagine that. <laughs> so uh, they only uh, can take it out for, the, for, the, uh, for bathing and, and sporting. And uh, as, as I said before, every six to 12 months, uh, they are reassessed. And it's also reassessed the need of a new device because they grow. Uh, and probably the brace doesn't fit the patient anymore or does, it doesn't have the desired treatment effect. So uh, is it the, the current uh, design and manufacturing process uh, uh, effective enough so that uh, it can be uh, 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 objective and uh, fast to produce uh, uh, a new brace every six to 12 months? So uh, the conventional design and, uh, and the manufacturing process uh, nowadays is still uh, relying on a lot of manual and iterative steps which, uh, which are uh, uh, delivered and executed by a CPO, a called CPO, which is a certified prosthetist orthotist who has the responsibility uh, to design and produce uh, these devices. So uh, uh, in, br in brief, uh, the way it works is that the CPO uh, receives all the, the clinical data here in the first stage, all the clinical data of a patient. This means uh, uh, X-ray images taken for diagnosis and also uh, prescribed uh, scoliosis braces that is prescribed for a, a specific type of scoliosis braces that is prescribed by a doctor. The CPO then uh, uh, gathers all these uh, clinical uh, uh, images and also a 3D scan that it takes in situ to the, to the external surface of the patient's torso. He imports this uh, into a 3D CAD software to design a positive mold uh, uh, of the brace. And this is designed over, over the 3D model of the torso. It just took, uh, by, but uh, this is an adapted uh, uh, model of the torso. Uh, it's a corrected version uh, where the CPO adds and removes material through CAD operations to the regions uh, he knows uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that should be pressed 
uh, so pushed to correct uh, the, the spinal curvature or that should be, should be relieved to give some space for tissue accommodation. Uh, this uh, positive mold uh, of the patient's torso is then uh, milled um, uh, through a CNC, in a CNC machine and the polyethylene uh, sheet uh, of material is heated up and uh, wrapped around uh, the mold through a vacuum thermoforming uh, procedure. The next stage, the CPO trims the brace out of the mold by drawing, uh, by drawing some trim lines uh, over the polyethylene sheet of material. And the way it does it uh, is, to, um, is to follow more or less the shape engraved in the brace uh, 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 due to the, 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 the compression over uh, between the, the polyethylene sheet and the positive mold. And uh, so it does it and, and mostly uh, uh, based on his ex experience, because this is a whole empirical method that is based on the experience and the expertise of the CPO uh, uh, to, to, to design this type of devices. Uh, so he does it without any visual support of, of, how, of um, uh, uh, how the brace should look uh, uh, after uh, trimming. He does it really based on experience and following this, uh, this, uh, the shape engraved uh, within, the, within the polyethylene shell of material. Next stage is the patient fitting session uh, where both the CPO and the patient work together to do some, uh, some readjustments and post-processing uh, uh, based on, on the feedback the patient gives also to, uh, to, 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 to do so that the brace is more comfortable for the patient to wear it, uh, but also to, to then to adjust some, uh, some locally some, some points to, uh, based on function. Uh, last step of uh, this whole procedure, procedure is the validation of the brace design. So, indeed, to analyze if the brace uh, uh, is, uh, is, um, is acting as, as, as required, uh, it's, uh, so it's, it's correct in the spine as, uh, as, as required. And this is done by taking an X-ray image uh, um, to the patient while wearing the brace, where the doctor then evaluates whether the, the brace is, uh, is, uh, is working uh, fine for the patient or not. So there's here a possible risk that we arrive to the end of the process and the brace is not delivering the treatment that, we des that the doctor uh, uh, aims for, for. And in that case, all this uh, needs to be redone. So, uh, summing up, the main uh, limitations of the conventional processes are, uh, are the fact that it still relies on man manual and iterative steps uh, and uh, uh, that uh, depend on the expertise of a CPO uh, and there's no, there's no standards uh, that guide the CPO uh, uh, of, uh, about the, uh, the procedures it should follow uh, for a specific type, uh, for a specific type and uh, um, and kind of spinal deformity. So our aim in the 3D Med project um, was to uh, uh, use 3D digital technologies as well as 3D printing to overcome uh, some of these limitations uh, uh, by, uh, by developing a framework, a digital framework uh, uh, that could uh, to improve the design and manufacturing uh, processes uh, of, uh, of scoliosis braces um, aiming also, of course, to uh, uh, while doing it in a more um, standard way uh, through digital uh, methods, to uh, uh, aiming to also to improve scoliosis brace treatments, and we do this um, under three pillars. Um, uh, we already heard about this in the beginning of uh, of, uh, of the session. So we do it under three pillars: uh, data streamline. Uh, and integration, uh, technology development, and validation. And now I'll go through uh, each one of these uh, objectives, how, what we did to achieve them. So basically for the first one, for that integration and streamline, what we did was to develop a digital framework uh, to, to streamline uh, uh, the design and uh, the manufacturing of uh, scoliosis braces. Uh, briefly, uh, uh, the way it works is it takes as input all the clinical images, all the clinical data uh, of a patient. Uh, it takes it as input uh, to build a 3D model of the upper trunk 
uh, of the patient that is used then to, to simulate and optimize uh, scoliosis brace designs and treatment. And the main strengths uh, of this workflow uh, is that it provides first a mean, uh, a mean to, uh, to control brace design based on function. And this is done uh, uh, through uh, a finite element uh, model uh, that is uh, built uh, for every patient. It's specific, uh, the anatomies described in the model are specific of a certain patient. Uh, this model uh, is, uh, so this model is, is built and is used to simulate scoliosis brace treatment, which means uh, uh, the degree of uh, spinal correction delivered uh, by the brace. This model is, uh, uh, represents an almost full, uh, 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 the almost complete upper body of the patient. It has in it all the vertebra from uh, uh, T1 to L5, uh, intervertebral discs, uh, ligaments, uh, um, uh, the rib cage, um, and these, these, uh, these components, they are modeled based on information of their uh, mechanical behavior, uh, uh, of the mechanical behavior of uh, the, the human body components that they represent and their uh, stress and deformation. And in this way, uh, this model is, is powerful in, uh, in predicting, uh, uh, the predicting the biomechanical behavior of the trunk when subjected to external pressure forces uh, uh, that are uh, delivered by the brace. Um, so uh, to to also, it's, it's an important thing to, in these models is, is to also assess the accuracy uh, uh, of, uh, of the predictions uh, we extract from them. To, um, to do it, uh, what we do is to compare the predictions of, uh, uh, taken from the model of spinal alignment, here shown in green, uh, and uh, compare it and validate it against the, the results of spinal alignment observed from the follow-up data. When this is done for a representative amount of data, uh, the CPO can, uh, can use these models to have uh, an estimate of the degree of spinal correction delivered by the brace before producing it, the contrary that uh, is, is uh, nowadays uh, done. And it can also, it's a powerful tool also for the CPOs uh, and, 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 and for us research, researchers to understand more about the biomechanical principles uh, that hold uh, best for a certain type and degree of spinal deformation. Uh, with, some, uh, with some further studies and statistical anal analysis, we would be able to, uh, to uh, uh, understand uh, and relate uh, by uh, uh, the effects of some, uh, of some, um, some design guidelines we take uh, as input to design the brace and the effect on, uh, on spinal correction and use it to uh, standardize uh, the design procedure of these devices. The second, uh, the second advantage and strength of this uh, uh, this workflow uh, that we developed is design optimization. Uh, here with design optimization, we aim at uh, uh, improving uh, the material distribution throughout the brace by, uh, uh, by allowing for local adjustments of uh, 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 shell thickness. Uh, with this, we were able to reduce the weight of the brace, uh, increase the comfort, uh, while comp uh, without compromising the stiffness of the device and the function uh, uh, of the brace uh, in spinal correction. Uh, interesting thing is that we do it, uh, of course, uh, taking the advantages of the 3D printing uh, manufacturing process in the design phase, so that we can uh, uh, we can already foresee uh, also the uh, the production of a first time right uh, design without the need of any uh, uh, manual post processing uh, by the CPU. Uh, so this design is the is then produced uh, by 3D printing, which is uh, currently the only uh, uh, manufacturing process that uh, allows uh, the production of accurate uh, uh, devices with complex geometry and local, uh, local variations of shell thickness. Uh, in this case, uh, a study, uh, selective laser uh, sintering was also the technology used uh, for production of scoliosis braces. Uh, um, during the project, uh, two uh, uh, medical grade materials, uh, polyamide 12 and 11, 
uh, they were tested and characterized for production and also post-processing uh, of these devices. Uh, and in the project, three prototypes of scoliosis braces, uh, optimized and uh, printed scoliosis braces were, were, the, were produced in polyamide 12. Um, and uh, a vapor polish, a polishing treatment uh, was applied uh, for a better uh, surface finishing. Um, so here I show you the one, just one of the prototypes, the one that best performed at, uh, um, uh, at the assessment stage. In this assessment stage, both uh, fit and form of the device over uh, um, uh, milled soft uh, foam of the patient representing the patient's torso uh, were, were assessed. Uh, this, uh, this assessment was done at Vigo um, uh, with the help of a CPO and the R&D engineer that is here on, on, uh, on, uh, on the conference, Jan. Uh, so uh, here uh, the CPO is assessing the strength of, and the flexibility of the device while open, uh, pulling it wide open uh, to fit around the torso uh, of the patient and uh, the, the tightening uh, uh, as it is done uh, in reality uh, for the patient every day whenever uh, he, he, he puts uh, in the brace for treatment. Uh, the feedback from the CPO was, was very positive. He validated the, the design as safe and suitable for patient treatment. Uh, there is, of course, here in this stage in the project, uh, we could only analyze the fit and form uh, to further analyze the, f in fact, if uh, in terms of functionality, there's any advantage uh, uh, of, uh, of having a 3D printed uh, device. We need to, to perform more um, more tests, more in a clinical setting to compare uh, uh, the efficiency of uh, 3D printed over a conventional device. Uh, but overall, uh, I would like to conclude just by saying that uh, with this uh, digital uh, workflow, we move, so we move basically from uh, an empirical method of designing and manufacturing the scoliosis braces, which uh, use, it's guided uh, mainly by manual and iterative steps executed by a, a CPO, uh, and which have a late fit and function verification of the design validation to a more standard and optimized method uh, uh, which, uh, with a, a small amount, a small, with a small amount of manual work at the moment, can reach fully functional, uh, uh, um, fully functional devices with an uh, enhanced uh, level of comfort. Um, of course, uh, this was just the initial uh, stage uh, or the initial phase of development. Uh, there's there's a lot still. Uh, there's a few steps also still to improve in terms of automatization of this this platform. But overall, uh, we uh, we foresee a, a great impact on, uh, on on the implementation, the future implementation of this protocol for the treatment of, of uh, uh, multiple patients in a more uh, in a faster and more efficient way. So, I would like to thank you all for being here and for listening. Uh, I would like to thank as well, uh, in particular, to all the partners involved in the project, uh, M2I, uh, Vigo, Ocean Z, uh, TU Delft as well. Um, and yeah, thank you. <laughs>